Henry Cejudo is here. Hi, Henry. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Look, feeling good, man. Feeling great. Enjoying, enjoying, uh, enjoying New York, and uh, I'm excited for Saturday night. Man, I got to tell you, Henry, I saw the picture. I think it was either you or Eric posted your coach. Bro, you're looking swole out here. What happened? I'm showing you guys what the true, what a true flight weight looks like. Not depleted, nice and strong. That's getting ready to take over the world. But a lot of that, I would, I would, I would give credit to uh, to my neuroscience team, NeuroForce One. Everything that I do is all based on technology and science. And uh, I have never felt so. At the age of 31, I'm in, I feel like I'm in my prime, baby. Never you know felt what I- so strong and. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was saying I went back and I watched a bunch of your fights, and I noticed your physique development. It definitely was strong in the last fight, but it appears you took even another gear up from that one. Do you feel even better than you did heading in to the Demetrius Johnson rematch? I do. I do. This is the best shape of my life. I've. Uh, I don't. I, I, I. This is. This is. This is how serious I'm taking this fight. Like I'm. Uh, I've done everything right. I've done it with my nutrition, with my recovery, with my sleep. I mean, everything, everything, everything. I mean, I've never had so much. I've never felt so strong for my life, Luke. And I'm, I'm looking to display that on Saturday night. Man, I can't wait. Now, are you, I, without getting too much into the details, are you lifting weights? Or, like, what accounts for what appears to be, yes, you don't have a ton of fat on you. But it does appear, Henry, like you've added some musculature. Yeah, you know, and a lot of that is like weight resistance. I think what we're doing uh, different is uh, it's in a lot of body mobility, a lot of almost like therapy type workout. Uh, that, that if I was to kind of uh, give the analysis, I'm using a lot of different. I'm using a lot of different machines that are uh, you know I'm doing like high stem. So when I do do uh, resistance weight training. You know, I have these like I have these these technologies that are on there that are helping me push, helping me get stronger throughout as I'm doing it. So there's a lot of it's it's the new age of training, man. I'm trying to, you know, I, I do a lot of that stuff and I show a lot of stuff on my social media, and uh, and 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 that's that. I mean, I, I like I said, I would credit I would credit my science team at NeuroForce One. I think they're doing a phenomenal job, and I think I'm 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 able to I'm, you know. When I take a picture, I'm able to show the world that. You know, what's amazing is um, DJ Dillashaw, I think he's going to make weight. I think he's a pro. I think when he says he's going to do something, he does. But, uh, man, those pictures are not reassuring. What do you make of his physique? Uh, obviously, he's in, um, you know, um, uh, he's not fat or anything, but I don't – it's just – it's a, it's a little off-putting, if I could be honest. Personally, I think he looks like Pee Wee Herman, if you were to ask me. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> In, in the physique way, I feel like he looks like uh, P. I really do feel like he looks like Pee Wee Herman. Did you think or, he was going to uh, look like or, this? Uh, I thought he'd have. I thought he'd have a little more bulk to him, but I guess not. He's he, he's not looking so well. He, he, it looks like he needs a couple a cup of water. Do you think he's going to make weight? Are you worried at all? He looks like a cross country runner. Yeah, that's actually a good point. He does. Pretty slender. <laughs> Are you worried he's gonna not yeah. make weight? Uh whether he makes weight or not, we're fighting Saturday night. So he can do whatever he wants to do. If anybody can say he could make weight, Luke. If you've ever cut weight, I know what it feels like to make that weight. Any true flyweight knows exactly what it feels like to uh, to cut an extra ten pounds. He's gonna feel it he's gonna feel it Saturday night and I'm looking and I'm looking to expose him. Uh, what do you mean he's going to feel it? Like, are you saying like you're you're definitely going to be fighting a diminished version of what he normally is? Yes, a hundred percent. Um, do you think that's going to affect things like okay? When we think about weight cuts, we think about what like uh, cardio, right? That's one thing that we commonly think of. But one thing that doesn't get talked about enough is some things like chin or body shots. Do you expect that would, would be relative to what he is at bantamweight, somewhat compromised? All that, all that's going to be on the menu. All of it. All that. Everything that you just said is all going to be on the menu. You guys tune in. Now, what's going to happen with flyweight after this fight? Let's assume you win. 
What happens next? The flyweight in the flyweight division is going to be resurrected. That's what's going to happen Saturday night. It's it, think about it, Luke. Think about it. this is the perfect story. We're fighting the inaugural ESPN Plus fight card. ESPN at flyweight. Hennessy is going to defend it. He's going to beat Demetrius Johnson. I mean, I'm sorry. He's going to beat TJ Dillashaw. And then the flyweight division get resurrected again. I mean, this is this is a Keith Sinera, but this is like a little wedding for him. <laughs> you kidding me? That's hilarious. This thing ain't going nowhere, man. This thing, this thing ain't going nowhere. And TJ Dillashaw is going to be my victim, and I love it. Now, what's interesting is I, I certainly hope you're right. I hope they get this chance to stick around, and it sounds like they might. Has the UFC told you anything? They have not told me anything, but I'm going to tell them Saturday night. It sounds like if the flyweights, like you and Benavidez and whoever else is there, d- does well, that they'll keep it around. Is that what you believe? Um, I do. I'll be, I'll be quite honest. I don't know what the UFC is thinking. I don't know how they think. You know, sometimes when you think something shiny and gold tends to be rusted and bronze. But that that's just the way it is, man. But I'm going to do mine. I'm going to fight for my division. I'm going to beat this dude up Saturday night. And uh, the flyweight division ain't going nowhere. That's that's all I could tell you. That's an interesting thing. And a lot of times when I when I interview fighters, Henry, they say I'm fighting for this, I'm fighting for that. They rarely say I'm fighting for a division. But every time I talk to a flyweight, Henry, they got a chip on their shoulder about this. Oh, absolutely. And I hope every I hope every flyweight's on my back. I hope every I hope and I can feel it that everybody's going to be cheering for me. So this is this is a fight where I'm fighting for a division for the sake of a division for the sake of a lot of families out there. And uh, and that's it. That's it. It's going to be a perfect Cinderella story. And I want to thank T.J. Dillashaw for allowing me to do that. And I want to thank my uncle Dana White for giving me the publicity. <laughs> uh, let's talk about a few more things with this fight. When you assess the biggest threat that T.J. Dillashaw poses, what is it? It's, uh, it's his his commitment, his his ability to commit to whatever he does. But it's also his biggest strength, but it's also his biggest weakness. And I'm going to expose that come Saturday night. Don't blink. Don't change the channel. Henderson is going to stop this dude. How do you feel about fighting on the first ESPN card? Do you feel like the UFC is finally recognizing you as a promotional talent? I think so. I think they're starting to... Uh, I think I'm 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 trilingual. I speak both English, Spanish, and Portuguese. I mean, I can I can salsa dance, I can hip hop dance. I mean, I can do it all. It's at the at the end of the day, it's it's them giving me the opportunity and me shining and and doing what I do best. And that's yeah, I gotta, to be knocking and cutting the head off the snake for good Saturday night. I got to tell you, Henry, I don't think I've ever spoken to you when you're this motivated. You sound you sound locked in. I'm locked in, cocked in, whatever you want to call it. I'm uh, this, this dude's gonna get it. This dude's gonna get it. He's messing with my division. He's trying to take my belt. He's trying to snatch my dream. TJ is gonna be my perfect example. Now you've had in the past, no, not not the recent past, but the past past. You've had some of your own weight cutting difficulties, as I mentioned, it hasn't happened in a while. But we circling back to the beginning of the conversation, you have added some muscle. So what have you done to like iron that part out of your prep so it's not a concern anymore? Well, it's a, it's a mixture of everything. It's a mixture of nutrition. It's a mixture of of doing of doing the right strength training. It's uh, it's the mix. It's a it's re, it's a recovery thing. Like it's it's everything. Like I'm I'm 31 now. I'm smarter about what I do. I I can't do the things that I was doing. When I was 21, 18 years old. And I think that's where a lot of fighters are making a lot of mistakes. It's almost like less is more. Less is more, but it's got to be, but the less has got to be really, really high quality training. By the way, last thing on this, when you hear TJ Dillashaw talk about how Max Holloway would be a great challenge for him, what what do you make of that? I think, I think he's ridiculous. I think, I think that weight cut is really taking, taking the toll on him. That's what I think. He can't think straight. Maybe so. Uh, Henry, 
I can't, I gotta tell you, man, I, I am, I am, you, you have, I mean, I was all in before. Don't misunderstand me, but I'm all, all, all in now. I really cannot wait for Saturday. I do think TJ's a professional and he's going to bring it. I know you're a professional. You're going to bring it. It'll be on ESPN plus, uh, the inaugural event. This is going to be great, man. Thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to see it. Yeah. But, yeah. But look, look, before we end it here. Is okay. this is this an interview? Is this is this is this a paper interview? Is this or, or are we live on radio here? We are live uh, on the internet. Oh, okay, okay. Why? I just want I just want I, I just want to let you know that a lot of people are talking about. Oh, I'm the champ, champ. I got two belts. Blah blah blah. I just want to let you guys know that TJ is fighting the champ, champ. He's fighting the Olympic champ and the current UFC flyweight champ that beat the greatest fighter of all time, and I'm the champ champ. Just FYI, I'm the true definition of champ. I'm Olympic champ, UFC champ. I'm one of one. Nobody in the UFC could ever say that. Nobody in the history of the history of this world could ever say that. I'm the true champ champ. Yeah, I want you to put this title, the real champ champ, Henry Cejudo, one of one. I can't argue with that. Uh, one of the most decorated combative athletes that we have. Henry, you don't need good luck, but best of it anyway for Saturday. I'll be there. Can't wait to see it. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate you. You have a good day. You too, Henry. There he is.